Ladies and gentlemen, today we remember and we reaffirm freedom is worth the sacrifice. Democracy is not perfect. It's never been good, perfect. But it's worth fighting for. Hello, midshipmen. Hello. <laughs> Great going. Hello, Naval Academy. Whoa. Before I begin my speech, a thought crossed my mind. And millions are hitting the road for the holiday weekend, sir, and they're paying record high gas prices. Truckers are feeling the pain. Grocery bills are sky high. What is the plan, sir, to bring these prices down? Well, Sandra, I agree. I mean, we have a, a, the American families are confronting price increases. They're having a hard time uh, dealing with their family budgets. Energy costs are, are way too high. The president has taken some steps to ease that by the release of our reserves. Uh, we recognize the international circumstances was a war war in Ukraine and the energy prices are not determined here in the United States, but we need to do more about it. I think it's going to be not difficult for anybody at the stage just to come over and, and try to get something. He just asked me like uh, two hours ago, now that I'm in Tijuana, if I will be able just to stop by uh, the Costco, local Costco store to see if I can buy the, the formula for the babies. The baby formula shortage is only getting worse. The out-of-stock rate hit 70% last week, nearly double the 40% rate in April. Some parents are taking matters into their own hands, even starting to travel to Mexico to find supplies. Boy, I mean, you know, we talk a lot about illegal immigration and Mexicans coming here. Now Americans are going to Mexico for baby formula. With store shelves still barren across the country, tonight communities organizing giveaways to help desperate families in need of baby formula. I have no baby formula for my baby for the last two weeks. An estimated 70% of the nation's baby formula supplies now out of stock. In Dearborn, Michigan on Friday, cars lined up for nearly a mile waiting for formula. Volunteers struggling to meet the demand as some in line were turned away empty-handed. I'm just like overwhelmed at this point. When it comes to the gas prices, uh, we're going through an incredible transition that is taking place that God willing when it's over will be stronger and the world will be stronger and less relying on fossil fuels when this is over. We have to find out. I mean, look, I'm mother five, a baby cries, we don't have food, come on. That's, that's just as bad as it gets. This is bad. It hits his home as yeah. deeply as possible. Thanks. This is going to be a haul. This is going to take some time. But in the meantime, it seems to me the best thing I can do in addition to try to get the uh, the uh, the, the Middle Eastern countries, including uh, OPEC, to raise their production of oil and move along that route is to see to it that we continue to grow our economy. With the highest number of illegal border crossers in history last month, we have a 40-year high in inflation, we have families that can't get access to baby formula, and for the ninth consecutive day in a row, we hit the highest gasoline prices in the history of our country. To put some context in this, we, I feel somewhat guilty talking to some of the other states on this because when we were gathering here in this same room a month ago, this is a comparison of the pictures that I showed you a month ago. This is in El Reno, Oklahoma. And El Reno, Oklahoma, you can get uh, gas a month ago for three ninety-five. As of this week, it's $4.34. And that's cheap for a lot of other areas of the country and what they're experiencing. Th this frustration that we have is this White House does this all the time right now constantly on energy production. That their focus is, we want more energy, we want more energy, and then when they ask for permits, if they ask for leases, if they ask for permission to do seismic tests offshore, they say no, no, no. So publicly, they're saying one thing, and then privately, they're saying to the producer something very different. What does that really look like in real life? Well, the administration, as they shut off seismic uh, studies in the Gulf of Mexico, they can say, well, the leases are out there, but you actually can't go drill because you can't do the seismic work. So instead, the president will go to Iowa and will say we're going to increase ethanol production. And then the very same week, the president steps up and says we're going to release a million barrels of oil a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Well, Mr. President, you announced that March the 31st. 
And March the 31st, when you made the announcement, we're going to release a million barrels of oil a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Average price was $4.22. Now we're hitting record highs, well above that. Listen, this constant rolling piece that we see is the constant increase of prices based on the administration saying they don't want more supply, but they actually want prices to go down. That's not how it works. This week, we, uh, in fact, just yesterday, we had a hearing with some of the folks from Canada and some of the energy producers from Canada and some of the Canadian government officials. And they were astounded that just months ago, President Biden announced that we need to get more oil into the United States. And so he went to Russia and to OPEC and encouraged them to produce more oil. When the Canadians were saying, we have ready oil available right next door. But for whatever reason, the administration doesn't want Canadian oil and is discouraging the production of American oil, all the while saying, I wish the prices would go down. At the same time, we've got investors doing this ESG, like BlackRock and others, that are actually trying to cut off access to capital for oil and gas companies that need access to capital to actually do the drilling and the operation. They're making the capital more expensive because of the ESG standard that they put out there. Listen, Americans feel this. This is what real life looks like every single day for Oklahomans when they're trying to figure out how I'm going to buy groceries and all the different effects that they're actually feeling. When Oklahomans ask me, why are prices up so high? I can point to this every time. Because the price of diesel is up, that means every single product that we buy that's transported on a diesel truck all just went up in price. The tr price of all shipping went up. The price of all ag products just went up because every single tractor fuel price went up skyrocketed. So we're feeling the effects on every single area of the economy because President Biden is unwilling to deal with the base of our economy, that's energy prices.